forget to edit that out before you upload. Okay. Hello, my beloved book peeps, and welcome to another episode of Book Train, where I, Katie Pullman Class Pullman, travel by train to other locales to raid their bookshops and also to tell you about the train trips. Book Train, it's what it says on the tin. Uh, the, today, uh, my girlfriend Stacy and I went to Bendigo to have a look at their bookshops and uh, see what the train was like. And uh, the bookshops, they've got some uh, really nice old bookshops there, just a few left. Uh, some uh, secondhand stores, which is, as you know, what I, I look in, and a rare books store on Farmer Street. Um, so it was lovely in those two locales. I actually found some lovely new historical detective fiction, and we know how much I love my historical detectives. Uh, so in uh, the, the first shop, uh, I've picked up a book which is Elizabethan era detectives, so I'm very much looking forward to reading about people with big ruffs going around trying to find out who actually wrote Shakespeare's plays, uh, and maybe who's trying to kill Elizabeth this time. Uh, and in the second store, uh, I was... Uh, Again, it was a, a lovely find. It was actually um, Sherlock Holmes once referred to John Watson as his Boswell. And somebody's actually got this idea of taking the real Boswell, who wrote the biography of Dr. Samuel Johnson, and have Dr. Johnson and Boswell going around solving crimes in the 18th century. So uh, it sounds a little mad. I have no idea if it's going to work. Looking forward to uh, finding out what that's all about. So so those first two um Stores gave me historical fiction, no, detective fiction, which is great. Uh, and my third book stop of the day was not at a bookstore, um, but uh, as we know, I also like to check out uh, the occasional uh, charity shop, uh, Vinny's and what have you, because if you get the right day and you're in luck, you can find some cool little books uh, in those places as well. And today I found a wonderful little uh, book of local uh, ghost stories and folklore around the Bendigo region. Um, so that'll be fun, a bit of spooky reading for a little bit later. Um, so yeah, I look forward to that. Um, so but before I get on to describing the books and showing you the covers and talking about uh, the bookstores themselves and how they looked and what they were like to visit, I want to tell you about the train ride because uh, we had a weird thing happen on the way um so train's coming back to melbourne this afternoon and it, it screeches to a halt it's somewhere outside castle main uh we all got thrown forward a little bit it was fine nobody got hurt it was just a bit unexpected and they've got the usual announcement saying oh yeah there'll be a short delay something was on the tracks you know they don't really tell you much information because they'd rather your imagination run riot so we don't know how long we're going to be stuck there. I'm happy. I've got three new books to read. I'm quite quite chill about the whole thing. Very pleasing. Stacy, however, she's a bit more uh, toey about it. She's uh, doesn't like to be shut up in uh, stationary trains. Obviously, even more than the rest of us don't like it. And uh, yeah, she likes to be out and about. Um, she's the adventurous one of the two of us that girl was made for adventure i was made for sitting in armchairs reading about adventures that other people have uh, uh no works for us so i'm reading my elizabethan detective fiction um getting all head up about that and stacy's just looking out the window and the next thing i know she's got katie honey there's a dog outside down below the uh, next to the train tracks seems to be in trouble i look through the window with her and sure enough there's this brown dog you know like standard aussie brown dog wouldn't kill a brown dog you know only like that turns out to be a bit prescient anyway so there's this poor dog outside near the train tracks and it looks like it's howling so, oh, only there's no sound coming out it's just like you know it was weird and when it sees us it stops howling and it starts to bark you know only there's no sound for that either it's all but like you know how like huskies they've got they're those beautiful dogs with the blue eyes but they've got no voice and they don't make sound really when when they're barking so it was like that um you know maybe it was just 
being behind the, the other side of the window, we couldn't hear it, but it was strange. And, and Stacy's all just like, poor doggo, right? I'm going to go and make sure that he's all right. And so she goes to the doors, presses the button, and even though we're stationary in the middle of nowhere, not next to a station, the doors open. And I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to do that, but they did. So there my girl goes. She leaps out of the train uh, to go and see what's happening with this dog. I did not leap out after her. I'm A, not built for leaping, but B, pretty sure if I had managed to get out of the train, there's no way I would be able to get back into it uh, <laughs> without there being a platform. And, you know, I didn't want that train scooting off without us in the uh with both of us you know sort of leaving us stranded out in the middle of the bush outside castle mate trying to work out how to get an uber so i waited on the train stacy goes and checks out this dog and like with the doors open we can still work when here is that we can't hear like that it's still got an, but no sounds super super weird so my lovely stacy goes to this dog to check it out and she loves animals and animals love her she's got such a sweet and gentle touch not just with me but with all the critters of the world and so like usually she's really good at calming animals down like, it, it's, it's a, like miraculous only this time it doesn't work she's going talking to this you know i can hear her talking to the dog and i can see the dog writhing around and not making sound and being weird and the next thing i know Stacy's swearing like a trooper and calling the dog names, which she never does, and comes back to me, showing me her hand because it's bitten her. Um, it's like, it's so unusual. Animals love her, you know, like, they, they just are so sweet with her. And yeah, she's, you know, there's blood everywhere. It's awful. And uh, we look back at this dog and it's kind of lying and it's like uh, twitching his little legs and, uh, and it stays, then it goes still and it's, chest is like so it's not dead not well obviously but it is not dead yet so anyway i help stacy back into the train <laughs> i think i did my lower back no help with that at all but i got my girl back on the train and we're all there and then the train starts moving off so she's very worried um about the bite in her hand i'm <laughs> worried about that it's true i am worried about the blood on the books as well because you know, i love my books but i love my stacy so i'm gonna help her wrap her hand up and she tries to phone someone from the council or a local vet to see if they can go and find out what's wrong with this dog um anyway so that all passed as soon as we're out of range and she's left a message because it was dark you know there was no nobody at home so she just left messages uh, and then she fell asleep on the train, which is not something she usually does, but you know, it was all a bit traumatic and upsetting and, and weird, like I said. So I guess, you know, my girlfriend saw a weird dog, it bit her, and then she fell asleep is a bit of an anticlimax to that, but uh, the, it was weird. It was, it was a very strange feeling on the whole train without having the whole silent howling thing. It was weird, just... I know I keep saying weird, but it was weird. And she's still asleep. Stacy? Hi, honey. No, I'm just. No, you have to speak up. I can't hear you. Hang on, I'll come over. Baby? Oh, what's wrong? Oh, that's not funny. Stacy? Jesus, shit, you bit me. Stacy? Oh, Jesus. 